So in the last video we finished up our electronics cabinet for our Precision Matthews 727M CNC conversion. I have to say that I'm very satisfied with the way it turned out. Everything seems to be have a place. It's nice and clean and I think going forward in the future if I ever have to do any kind of wiring or troubleshooting it should be fairly simple to uh, do that. Likewise, if this panel should ever have a new owner, uh, it should be fairly easy to troubleshoot and uh, work on. So now that we have the panel finished, uh, I would like to take a minute and, and just kind of go over the theory of operation. I had a lot of questions as I was going along through this build. Uh, different reasons of uh, why I did certain things and I kind of explained them as I've went along but I wanted to save the uh, holding circuit which is right here in our control circuit uh, for this video because I get a lot of questions on that there are several ways I could have done things uh, I didn't have to do it this way there's no set way of doing things however I tried to make my panel uh, sort of industrial and up to uh, some of the industrial standards that I see in panels every day on equipment that I work on. Of course, you you know, unless you want to spend thousands of dollars, you can't really get it as nice as I would like it. But for this particular build, I think anybody working on this panel that works on equipment out uh, in the industry would find a lot of this stuff familiar. Now the holding circuit that I got so many questions about is sort of an industry standard and anybody that's worked on any kind of equipment uh, once I explain this if you don't know what a holding circuit is uh, you will definitely uh, understand why it is needed and what it does. So we have our power coming into our main disconnect over here and then it just goes to our three fuses or in my case I swapped them out and now I'm using three circuit breakers uh, now the 120 volts goes out and is sitting right here on these two rocker switches which are on our control panel here now this one enables the coolant when this is switched on Mach 3 is in control of the coolant and it will uh, turn the coolant on and off through the solid state relay that we wired in. With the switch off, even if Mach 3 turns the relay on, power does not go out to the outlet and coolant will not flow. I did this because on my G0602 there are times when you're running code and you don't want coolant. Uh, but the cam processors automatically, unless you go in there and change it um, or delete it out of the G-code, it puts it in there. Uh, and whether, rather than hassle with the defaults every time I'm processing code and having to go in there and modify it, I just thought the simpler way would just put a button just to turn it on and off. Uh, so I added this rocker switch for the coolant. 120 volts is also sitting at this switch and this turns on our other outlet and that will turn on our computer and monitor. Uh, this way we can use this switch to turn our computer and monitor on rather than the buttons on the PC and the monitor. We also are sending 120 volts over to our C1 contactor and it's sitting on one set of contacts here another set here and that is for our 48 volt power supply transformer for our stepper motors and our tri-power power supply our next fuse is sending 110 volts through our control circuit this is our power button our e-stop and our power button And at this point right now, 
we have 110 volts sitting on one side of our holding contacts and also one side of our push button power on switch. From our next circuit breaker, we have 110 volts sitting at our C2 contactor. This is our big contactor, and this is only to power our VFD via the EMI filter and up to the VFD. Once this is energized, it will power the VFD with this coil. When this coil right here, C2, pulls in. And that will only happen if this key switch is closed and a door switch, which I don't have hooked up at this time, uh, is also closed. So, this is where we're at in a static state. Power is sitting right here. Power is sitting at these two rocker switches. And power is sitting at this C2 contact right here. Now, once we press the power on button, 110 volts will go through the button momentarily as long as the button is pressed and power will be applied to our C1 relay coil. Once that coil is energized, it will close these sets of contacts right here. These are our holding contacts. When these are closed, then when the push button is released, power is still applied to the coil and will keep it energized keeping C1 set of contacts here for our tri-power power supply closed as well as our set of contacts here for our 48 volt transformer. It will also keep that closed. So you can kind of see how the holding circuit gets its name. It holds these contacts closed by keeping C1 coil energized. Now why do we need this? Let's say you're running your machine and the power goes out. Uh, if you didn't have this and you just had this ran straight through without the push button and without the coil, uh, without the contacts here, if you lose power then the machine's going to shut down. But as soon as power is reapplied these are going to re-energize and your machine is going to start back up. That's not a good situation to be in. Uh, you don't know where and where the equipment is and what stage it's in and you don't definitely don't want the spindle to start back up. Uh, you're going to either tear something up or injure yourself. So this is why the holding contact and holding circuit is needed strictly for a safety reason uh, it's on just about every piece of equipment I work on in the industry and you see it on a lot of machinery that you purchased it's a good safety feature to have in any piece of equipment uh, you really need to have something like that um, just for safety reasons after C1 contactor is pulled in the fan will come on and also if the key switch is turned and the door switch is closed it will also energize C2 contacts for our big contactor and power will be applied to our VFD and that's basically it it's pretty simple uh, the only thing I was really getting a lot of questions about was the holding circuit and hopefully uh, now that I've explained it you'll see that it's basically just a safety feature just in case uh, you lose power. Now likewise the key switch for the C2 contactor the reason I put this key switch in here is to disable the VFD. If you turn this key switch and open up these contacts then C2 contactor will de-energize and the contacts will pull open and this will shut down the VFD and let's say you're doing a you're probing a piece of material to find the uh, center with the touch probe you don't want the VFD to uh, the spindle to inadvertently start up 
So you just turn your key switch, that de-energizes the VFD, and then when you do use your touch probe, uh, you don't have to worry about the spindle starting up because you've got a wire attached to that touch probe as you're probing, and you definitely don't want that to wrap up around the spindle. Um, it's just a safety thing. Likewise with the door switch, if you open up the door to go in there to do some uh, change a tool bit, etc., you can disable the C2 contactor, which will also disable the spindle, so it's not going to inadvertently start up while you're in there changing the tool. Again, uh, these are just safety features that I tried to incorporate into the uh, build. So now that we know that how it's kind of works, let's just see what happens when we power it up. So we're going to push our start button, our power on button. And so what I want to see happen is I want to see my fan come on. I want to see my contacts pulled in. I want to see some power indication on my C11GS. I would like to see some power indication on my stepper motor drivers. And also, the TriPower power supply has a green light uh, showing that it has power. So here we go. Uh, if you, you won't be able to see these contacts pull in probably, but you will be able to hear them. Here we go. You can hear our fan come on. You can see that our VFD has some indication that it has power. I'm not exactly sure what those mean because I haven't looked it up yet and I don't have anything programmed in the VFD at this time. You can see our C2 contactor pulled in. We have our green LED for our tri-power power supply. Our stepper motor drivers have green LEDs indication and our C11GS has the top two SMDs indicating uh, it has power and that there's an input for the e-stop. So I don't see any blue smoke. Everything looks good. Pretty satisfied with the uh, overall panel. And uh, if I disable the spindle, our C2 contactor pulls out. As you can see, it's sticking up now. And our power on our VFD dies. It has capacitors in there, so it takes a minute for it to drain, but you can see that we've lost power. But everything else is still up and running and so if we want to use our touch probe uh, to indicate our part we can do so and of course if we hit an e-stop or if we lose power everything dies again it takes a second for the stepper motors to power down because this capacitor right here has uh, has to drain. And everything's powered off and uh, safe. So hopefully this little overview will help you better understand uh, what's going on in the panel and how it works. So thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.